What's up everybody? So today's video is a request from you guys. After watching my fan design video, you guys wanted to know how exactly do I design fan blades. And that's what we're going to do today. Now I will say I'm not an expert. I do know how to do some simulation. I won't be doing that today. I didn't really do it last time. But I'm just going to show you basically how you can design fan blades yourself to start trying out your own designs and kind of figure out what works and what doesn't. So let's get going. So let's get started here. Now, uh, other than some 3D design software, other things you might consider getting or like a micrometer or something to measure because in my case, I'm going to be using a new motor that I found. So I've been working on a follow-up to my last fan design video by making a fan that's more, let's say, user-friendly. There's no sense in having a motor that overheats the fan because that kind of negates all the cooling things. But either way, I found a fan motor that I think will work and that's kind of what I'm going to design a fan blade around today. I'm going to kind of walk through the steps, but... A micrometer will help you figure out what dimensions you got to make things, and that's essentially all I really use. But to start out, let's make the fan hub. So we'll do new sketch zero. We'll do a circle, and I know that I want this to be about 33 millimeters. Exit sketch to extrude, and this is how thick do you want our fan? I want it 15, and I'm going to set this as a mid plane. Keep everything symmetric, and there you go. There's our fan hub. Not much to it. The next part is probably the toughest part in this whole deal, and that's making the blades. So I'm going to turn on the front plane because that's where our blades are going to start from. And then I'm going to highlight that and do a reference geometry and new plane. And we're going to offset that 90 millimeters because we're going for a 140 millimeter fan. So 90 mils because we're going to have to cut it in the end to make everything the right width or the right diameter. And there we go. So our fan blades will start on the front plane and they'll terminate on the plane one. So the first step here will be making a new sketch on the front plane and to draw the fan blades we're just going to make it nice and simple straight line down straight line across and then a three-point arc from the top of this one to the back of this one not worry about the radius yet and then another three-point arc so boom a uh, boom boom and from my experience I like this to be one it seems like it gives you a decent thickness so there's one and one and we'll set how long we want the blades so I want these to be 15 millimeters now that obviously that shape's not going to work we're essentially just trying to make an airfoil so we'll just drag these freehand until we get them roughly where we want them to be what's that looking like so 30 30 and 25 so far so good now our drawing isn't fully defined yet so we need to give it a start point so let's say the front of the fan to the origin Wow, one mil. So there you go. There's our fully defined sketch of our starting blade profile. Now, this fan is going to be one that doesn't spin so fast. It's going to be a normal fan motor. It's the EVGA 1080 uh, fan that I'm going to be using, the motor from that. So it's about 3,000. So I want these blades to kind of sweep forward like you'd see a normal fan. So there's our first sketch. We're going to exit that one. We'll go to our plane one now, new sketch. Essentially, we're going to do kind of the same thing. So we're going to do line down, line across, and then our three-point arc from the start to finish. Don't worry about the radius yet. Start to finish. Don't worry about the radius yet. And we know this is going to be one again. One again for that. And I want this one to be a bit longer. So 25, 10 mils longer. Now, normally in blades, the blade root or the closest to the hub spins, you know, slower than the tip, so it has a more aggressive angle. You can either do a flex where you flex the blade, and I'll show you. I can, I can show you how that's done. Or, and since this is just a rough draft and I'm just trying to make it fit on this motor, I'm just going to kind of design it in there. So that blade was, you know, 15. This one's 25. We're going to make the angle attack a little less aggressive here. So what's that look like? Say 45, 50. Mm, looks a little goofy. 55. No, nope, still goofy. 40. Going the wrong direction. Nah, I like that better. There you go. And we still need to fully define the sketch. So we'll make this. So I want it to sweep forward. So I'm going to make this sketch farther forward. I'll say 15. Perfect. Exit that sketch. And now you can see we have two sketches on two planes. And, I mean, 
we could go to feature now, go to lofted base, select this plane or this fit, these two sketches, and then it'll just draw a straight line. We're going to make sure this is on the same corner. There you go, straight line. But that's, that's way too boring. So what we're going to do is make it a little bit fancier. We want it to look kind of like a fan you'd buy in the store at Micro Center. So I'm going to hide this plane. I'm going to hide this plane. And basically when we get to a lofted base, we need to give it a guide curve. So if we don't, it's going to be a straight line. So I'm going to set, since, you know, this point is on the top of this surface and this point is on the bottom of this surface, I can kind of set my guide curves without having to make new planes. I can just do like a sketch on this surface. So there's a sketch. Oh, did edit sketch. Sketch. So we'll go, we'll make this top one just a simple three-point arc. And we'll set the radius as 60. Perfect. Still blue lines, not fully defined, but not a big deal. And you could now, you could do a lofted base. You could do this sketch, this this one. Our guide curve could be this guy, and there you go. It makes a more believable fan profile, so a blade profile. But I want to make it a little more interesting. So I'm going to do another guide curve on this side, so a new sketch. And I'll do a, where's that point? So this one, so we'll do, we'll do T here. We'll do a nice shallow curve, and then we'll do from this point to this point, we'll give it a little thickness, a little girth. It looks a little goofy, but why not? There we go. Let's see, 75, 50. Now, I'm, I mean, I haven't run this through Sim, so I could, I don't know if this is a good idea, but I just want to show you how you would put like a different profile on the on the fan. There's the, essentially you could just do the one guide curve and be done with it, but just for the, just for show, we're just gonna do this. So now we're gonna exit that sketch, and. Now we'll go to Lofted Boss. Get rid of that. We'll do this sketch to this sketch. No, no, the wrong one. Profiles. This sketch to this sketch. Guide curve one, guide curve two, and it's automatically picked that up. And there you go, you got a fan. Fan blade, essentially. Now it's a little too big, if you remember, it's. Uh, probably I think it's like 180 is its diameter so we're gonna cut it down now so we need to draw another circle and our fan is 140 millimeters so we want this to be 135 and we're going to do exit sketch cut through all you can even do through all both through both but through all work got nothing on the other side but anyway and then we do flip side to cut now if you look at this little arrow it means anything on the outside of this circle is gonna be trimmed away and Boom. You have a fan blade that's the correct, now it's the proper length. Still goofy looking, but either way. Now, we could circular pattern it, get our get how many blades you want, but then we'd have to go in and put our fillets in later. So what I do now normally is I add my fillets in now to make it easier so then we can mirror those as well. So I want to break this front corner. So I'll take a fillet. Don't want 15, let's say 5 this e, two two's fine soften the corner up and then I want to break the leading edge so we'll do point four here and here that should round the whole blade out there you go not too bad and then I try to get rid of all these sharp edges because it's kind of just a weak point so we'll do here mm. two's fine two's fine for now so now essentially we have a profile we're gonna I guess we have this other sharp edge here essentially we're gonna smooth that out as well and we'll stick with 20 oh. there you go we got one blade not too bad but one blade doesn't really get us anywhere. So now we're going to go up to the linear pattern. We're going to go to circular pattern. 
and instead of features we're going to go bodies so we can get every fillet we just added here as well so click this there we go whole body direction around the circle and let's say five blades and there you go we got a five blade design 140 millimeters in diameter and essentially that's it I mean that's basically how I go about it you can tweak the guide curves you can tweak you know the pitches the angles the thickness all that stuff I always like to make it flat on the bottom at least for when I print them out because it gives you a better adhesion uh, I guess I, I, was, I we talked about flexing so let's go back to our lofted so here's our first initial first thing and if we take this and we make it we edit this we don't merge results so let's, this is just to show you that you could flex if you wanted to and I've done this in the past I you know flex the blades here and there to see how they perform so what we'll go to is insert features flex select the blade and we'll just look look onto it and right here we can change the degree so say you want to have five degrees of flex so, th so the tip comes down and then essentially you got a more aggressive angle of attack at the blade root and less at the tip and then I, what I've done is I did this and I, I run a simulation to see how it performed come back out say well what about negative five degrees and then the tip tip comes up the root goes down run it again and you can kind of tweak it until you find what the perfect one is but for now I don't really need to worry about that because I'm just trying to make something that fits on the motor I got we'll worry about aerodynamics later so let's take that back to how it was merge results and bam so here's our finished blades finished finished design now I have a motor already that I need to fit into. Oh, I forgot one step. So essentially we got a bunch of different bodies all stacked on top of each other. So what we need to do is go to insert features and combine these all together so we get one solid body again. So combined, select everything, and there you go. And everything's one. Now I have a motor that I'm trying to fit all this to. So I need to make a cutout in the bottom to press this onto my new motor. So new sketch, square that up. I'll make another circle. So the measurement I'm getting is 30.26. We'll print a little underside. We want it to be a tight fit. So we'll say 31 to start with. We'll exit sketch. We'll cut that. And it looks to be about 10 millimeters deep. So we'll make that 10 millimeters deep. There's a cutout. Now I this the way this is designed, there's a little a little base or a little extrusion for it. So another circle looks to be about 10 mils. A little over 10 mils, so we'll do 10 mils. Exit sketch looks to be 2 millimeters tall, so we'll do 1.5. Exit sketch. And then in the center of this is a shaft that has where the bearings go through that we need to be press fit. So another circle. The shaft looks to be 3 millimeters. I want it to be a press fit. Since everything prints a little in oversized, we'll do 3.1 to start with. See how that works. Exit sketch. Cut extrude. Or just cut, extended cut. And we'll go 5 mils deep. And there you go. So that should, hopefully, press fit onto that motor. I can do a little finishing work here, make it maybe a little easier. So we'll do a, a slight chamfer here. I didn't want five, 0.5. There we go. A little chamfer there. And even small. What am I going to print this? About 0.1 mil, point height, one point one layer height. So we'll do 0.2 chamfer on the inside just to help guide that shaft in and there you go so there is essentially the finished concept idea so I would then now print this out see how it fits make changes and then when I got everything exactly how I wanted to at least where it's concerned on the inside where this fitting to the motor then I would go back and worry about the blade so say um, I did a simulation and five blades look good but Eight blades did better. Well, then I could come up to my pattern, edit this, change this to eight, run a new sim, see how it works, and say, well, it looks good, but once we want to go crazy, we want to do another 30 blade design, so we could change the 30. And there you go. The only thing we got to watch here and see how, see, make sure they don't start overlapping. But essentially, that's, I mean, they a little bit, but either way, you could print anything out. But you know. When I do this stuff, I like to do my first print. It's something real simple that will print real quickly. So I'm going to do edit feature. 
And I only want two blades because it will print two really quick. I could probably even do one, but two's fine. It'll at least spin. And it'll be quick to print. So then I'm going to do file save as two blade. Save the parts so we can edit it later. And then we'll also save a version to print. So STL. And there you go. That's all there is to it. We print it out. We'll make the changes necessary when we get something that fits up the way we like it. Then we'll worry about the finishing touches like blade count, uh, smoothing all our finished lines out to make everything look nice and pretty, and test it out. So keep an eye out for this video because I'm currently working on this concept. I'm going to print this out, see how it fits, and I'll see you in a future video. So if you're not, make sure to get subscribed, and we'll see you. See you later, guys. Oh, and you have anything else you want me to help you design or any ideas for future content, always, as always, leave a comment down below. See ya.